In today's journey, we are making Wine Experts Pink Moscato. This kit is not available all year round, so please check with your local supplier for availability. If anything is missing from the kit, it is best to know now. So we start by taking an inventory. First, we should have one package of yeast, one package of Benonite, one package of potassium metabisulfite, one package potassium sorbate, one package piasol, one package chiostan, a package of labels, the all important instructions that I highly recommend reading. If you lose these, you can also obtain another copy from wineexpert.com. This silver pouch is your reserve to be added after primary fermentation has been complete. And last but not least, the juice base bag that contains all the sugars that will be converted to alcohol during primary fermentation. Now that we know all of our ingredients are here, we start by taking a sanitized six gallon carboy. And instead of following the instructions, Bill decides to invent his own way, which we will fast forward through to save you some time. What Phil should have done was used a funnel to add one liter of hot water directly into the carboy, followed by the package of Benonite, and then swirling the entire carboy around. Not being too concerned about getting all of the Benonite dissolved, as later we are going to use a drill attachment to mix the rest of the ingredients together. We now add the contents of the juice base bag on top of the Benonite. We are fast forwarding because Phil clogged the funnel and this is taking longer than it should. Next, we fill the carboy until we hit the 6 gallon or 23 liter mark. We are using store bought spring water as we are not fans of the well water that our studio has access to. You can add the yeast now, or you can wait as per the instructions until after mixing everything else together. As you can see, the juice base and the water don't really want to mix together by themselves. So we will be using a drill attachment to help us mix all of this together. 
Until then, all hydrometer readings will be inaccurate. Also, fermentation may be hindered, as high concentrations of sugar can kill yeast. Time is being manipulated for your convenience. In addition to mixing the liquids together, we are also taking this opportunity to incorporate as much oxygen as possible at this point to promote cell growth of the yeast. Once fully mixed, top with an airlock, then place at room temperature, about 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. After about 14 days, we are ready to move on to stabilizing and degassing of the wine. Be sure to have your potassium metabisulfite, potassium sorbate, and kiosol ready to go. You will probably want to sanitize some scissors to open the kiosol packaging. We did our hydrometer readings off camera, but you will want to make sure that yours is reading OT996 before moving forward. Otherwise, you risk having cloudy wine or overly sweet wine in the end. If you are having troubles reaching your target gravity, you may have to raise the fermentation temperature or repitch a similar yeast. With our gravities where they should be, we now use an auto siphon to transfer the wine over into another sanitized 6 gallon carboy. Trying to avoid as much sediment at the bottom as possible, but do not worry if some transfers over. We will have more time for clearing later. Even with our larger half inch auto siphon, this will take about 10 minutes, so we will speed up time for your convenience. Do not attempt to transfer every drop of wine over, as at the end of the day, it comes down to quantity or quality. We now take the package of potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate and add them directly to the carboy. These are the stabilizers that will prevent further fermentation of the sugars that will be added during the back sweetening phase. If any gets stuck on the side, don't worry, as we are about to use our drill attachment again to start the degassing process. With the drill, we will only need to do this for about 2-4 to four minutes, reversing direction about every 30 minutes. I like to use first gear to prevent anything from getting too out of hand in the beginning. And as for the option of doing this by hand, don't unless you are looking for a good upper body workout. The mix stir is not just an upsell, but a good idea. If you plan to do a lot of wine, a vacuum pump is actually the best method to use. But we don't have one right now. Once we have finished the degassing, 
We now add the Kisa salt directly into the carboy and mix for about another 30 seconds. There is no cause for alarm that the wine is now cloudier than it was when we started. This is actually to the benefit of the clarifying agent. With day 14 coming to an end, all we have left to do is add an airlock on top. This time, an S airlock instead of the primary fermentation airlock. With an S airlock, it will be easier for the carboy to expel any excess CO2 from the degassing process that still may be lingering in solution. After only 24 hours have passed, we can see that the clarifying agents have already begun to do their job. But before we start today, we would like to make sure that we have our Chitto stand ready to go before moving forward. We start day 15 by removing the airlock and pre-sanitizing our funnel for making the task of adding the reserve pack a lot easier. After years of opening these, I have learned to use a pry bar instead of brute strength to open them in order to avoid spilling any of the precious liquid inside. It doesn't hurt to give it a good squeeze before pouring it in to make sure that the sugars are evenly distributed inside the bag. It may look a lot darker than a pink right now, but after clarification and aging, the color will lighten up. Because the density of these two liquids are so great, we will want to use the stir mixer again to make sure that everything is evenly distributed. I like to mix in between every step, as any additional degassing at this point can't hurt. We now return the carboy back to its original fermentation station. Over the span of the next five days, we can watch as the clarification process starts to happen even through the dark colored liquid. On the fifth day, we start to notice a ring of crud forming around the edges. That is when we come by and give it a twist just like this to help everything fall to the ground. 
Do not lift it up and down, as we do not want to re-rouse anything that has already fallen. We now give this another 14 days for clarification, returning it back to its fermentation station. If your wine is not perfectly clear yet, you can give it another 7 to 14 days, as transferring cloudy wine at this point can lead to troubles further down the bottling line. Because I am gifting this wine, and I intend for it to last longer than 3 months, I will be adding an optional 1.5 or quarter teaspoon of potassium metabisulfite to the wine to help preserve its flavor and color. As we prepare to move on to the polishing phase, we use our sanitized half-inch auto siphon to move into another 6-gallon carboy that has been pre-sanitized. This time we take the utmost care into not transferring in any sediment to the next carboy as we are coming up to the final product. Again, we will fast forward for your convenience. Sometimes, the hardest part in winemaking is knowing when not to push your luck. Worst case scenario, you lose a few glasses of wine. This time, we top with a solid bung instead of an airlock, as we return the carboy to the fermentation station one last time for two days. With our wine perfectly clear, we're ready to move on to bottling. Once our bottling bucket, auto siphon, and bottling wand are sanitized and ready to go. This will be one of our easiest transfers, but there is still a small layer of sediment at the bottom that you will want to be mindful to avoid.
With the transfer done, we prepare the bottling wand on our spigot like this. Please excuse us as we set up our system. With our floor corker in hand and about 30 bottles pre-sanitized, we are ready to start bottling. We start by tipping the bottle on its side to fill from an angle. As the wine level starts to near the top, you can start to point the bottle upward. You will want to fill the bottle all the way to the brim, as when you remove the bottling wand, it will leave the perfect amount of headspace inside the bottle for you automatically. Once we have filled the bottle, we can take a sanitized cork, place it into the top of the corker, and when the bottle is locked in position, push the cork in. This is miles easier than using the easy double lever cork. And if you plan to do more than one batch of wine a year, it is well worth the investment. Please excuse me while I fill the remaining bottles. And thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's a beautiful wine. Lovely plumage.